year was 1981. The first DeLorean DMC-12 rolled off assembly lines and into science fiction history. MTV lit up television screens with Video Killed the Radio Star by The Buggles. Joe Piscopo and Eddie Murphy carried Saturday Night Live into its seventh season. The New York Times first reported what would become the beginning of the AIDS pandemic. And nine gay men in Seattle formed the Greater Seattle Business Association. From its infancy, the GSBA has endeavored to support the LGBT community with its business, philanthropy, and advocacy efforts. It was a really hot July evening in 1981. I can remember we had to have the door open. It was so hot in this really small restaurant. But it was a pretty enthusiastic crowd. They probably were 20 people there, 25. And I know friends asked me, you know, what about it? And I started encouraging them to participate. The GSBA printed its first annual business guide, starting 30 years of bound history for LGBT businesses in Seattle. The guide is the glue that holds the organization together. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, it's the thing that's been consistent for 30 years. When the first guide came out, it was like, uh, it's unbelievable to th think of a whole book of gay people. I mean, I always like to see what my ad looks like. I haven't changed it in 20 years, so I'm not sure why I'm waiting to see what it looks like, because it looks like it looked last year. Dedicated to its mission of bringing LGBT business together, the GSBA sponsored monthly luncheons, allowing an open forum and exchange of ideas. To walk into a room with a, a hundred members having lunch and to have a candidate for the 34th legislative district sitting over there and his opponent sitting over there. Uh, an elderly couple came in, uh, hadn't seen them before, both gray-haired, tall gentlemen, and they sat down and we, when the mic got to them, they stood up and said, we are here because today we mark our 40th anniversary. Uh, the hall erupted in standing ovation. It was a remarkable image of endurance and I think people just felt an emotional response for their success. You know, GSBA, one of their first people was the mayor at the time, Wes Ullman, and who would have thought that the mayor would have shown up at a luncheon? Now, you know, they're, they're all the time. I mean, it's not even a piece of news. But it was, uh, it was exciting, exciting time. That injected some energy into the organization. We looked around and said, you know, we're coming together. In 1984, the GSBA held its first Business and Humanitarian Awards Banquet, honoring community and business leaders. Back then, it was a, that was probably the most exciting thing to see a group of people in the same room who you didn't know, because there were little you know, groups of people that you knew that were gay, but you, all of a sudden, this whole room full of people was... And I still feel that today when I go to the auction or some big event. It's just amazing. But back then, it was pretty new and different and pretty exciting. Quickly, the GSBA Awards Dinner found elected officials and national corporations in attendance. Look at who our, who our sponsors are now. Microsoft, Wells Fargo, um, Safeco, American Family Insurance. You know, 30 years ago, they would have thought of it was the kiss of death. The 80s also saw major victories for the gay community as the GSBA took an active role in advocacy for civil rights. I think having the GSBA come to Olympia to speak on business issues always catches people by surprise. I, I see that in, in the audience and among the members. When a group comes up, identifies themselves as a chamber, starts talking about business issues, and mentions that they're also a gay and lesbian organization, uh, it starts to break down barriers uh, throughout Olympia. The culture has to change, and then the politics follows. And GSBA has just been instrumental in changing the culture and getting people to realize who we are. And as that change happens throughout the culture, we pass legislation that helps our community here. Uh, this is all attributable going back many years when people started getting involved with these organizations and the chorus came along, the athletic organizations. The, uh, it was just a part of this thing that was sort of set in motion by the formation of the GSBA. I mean, if you ever told me 30 years ago we were gonna be looking at marriage equality, you know, like that, and that we might actually at some point get it, 
nationally, but forget about nationally, even in this state. I mean, I don't know that we're gonna get it. We have the everything but here. You know, but, but GSBA has been in the forefront of all of that. And if you had said that to me 30 years ago, I would have probably said, what did you do? What, what have you smoked lately? 1991 saw the introduction of the GSBA Scholarship Fund, providing two $2,500 scholarships in its first year. I think it says that, you know, that there's a community of people out there who are wanting to see kids succeed. And um, that's, that's really encouraging. And GSBA is a business association. It's mostly, you know, adults, successful business people. And so to have that scholarship program, it brings younger people into, into the equation. And um, so in that way, it's sort of building this sort of multi-generational community. And we have a, you know, preference toward um, looking for leaders. So beyond just LGBT students, we're looking for leaders and there's just not that much out there to help with the cost of uh, education. Throughout the 90s, the GSBA helped create philanthropic and business organizations such as the Western Business Alliance, the Corporate Sponsorship Program, and the Pride Foundation. In 2007, GSBA moved into its own independent office on Capitol Hill, creating a central hub for community efforts. We have a space where, where our employees work. We meet with, have a lot of committee meetings there so members know where GSBA is, it's not just a P.O. box or a, you know, an, 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 it has a place. It's created a structure and a, an array of program that, that's admired across the country. In 2010, the GSBA launched the first LGBT tourism initiative. Travel Gay Seattle, where out is in. Uh, they've worked with the state in an initiative uh, to bring uh, GLBT tourists to our area, uh, which is very important for business and very important for tax revenue. What began as nine founding Seattle professionals and over 80 members has bloomed into the largest business chamber of its kind in the nation. So, you know, in 20 years, we went, we went from zero to a thousand in 30 years. We went from 85 to a thousand in 20 years. I look back on those years as great, fun, challenging, uh, emotional years. Um, without their partnership, um, we wouldn't be where we are today. We did it because this, these were our people and we wanted to support them. And, and these were our people who supported us. They proved that if you get organized, you can, you can get things done. I'm just really grateful that there are organizations like the GSVA out there to support people like me who, you know, don't always know what they're doing in life, but, you know, the GSVA is there to sort of give me that extra push. It's a pretty remarkable story, and there's no other city that I know of that can point to that history. Over the past 30 years, the GSBA has had an enormously successful mission to combine business development, social action, and leadership to expand economic opportunities for the LGBT community and those who support equality for all. GSBA was formed so we could find each other. And I think people came out of the woodwork. I mean, how fun is that to see that?